Here with Carmelo Hayes heading into Money in the Bank weekend in Toronto. First of all, Carmelo, I want to go back to last week. It was uh, Madison Square Garden, sold out. Is that your first time at Madison Square Garden as part of the main roster? Dude, first time in general at Madison Square Garden, yeah. And what was that experience like? I, it, does it really have just the, the aura, the feel that kind of separates it from any other buildings? Yo, it was cool as hell, man. Uh, I was walking, you know, earlier in the day and I just saw Triple H standing in the ring by himself. And I walked over to him and it was like asking him, tell me everything about all your experience, you know, about his debut. And then he was talking to me about the curtain call. And, you know, so I got like that little tidbit of all these like, you know, cool moments. He's like right over here and right over here and right over there. And I was just, you know, as a fan, I was like, this is just cool. But as a performer, you know, I didn't perform there. But, you know, just being in the, you know, in the building was super cool, man. What's the uh, kind of like communication you have with, with a Paul Levesque? Is it kind of like an open door policy? Do you have that that access at, at TV on days that I'm sure are really busy and chaotic? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not going to go out of my way to say, hey, you know, Hunter, if I can see he's busy. But, you know, there's opportunity, you know, I'm, of course, I'm going to try and talk. You know, I, one, I've, I've known Hunter since I started. He was a big proponent for me early on. You know, he gave me a shot right away. And, you know, he's been very vocal in, in helping with my success as long, along with Sean. Um, you know, so I mean, but now it's just kind of just building the rapport and, you know, just getting, letting him get to know me some too, you know. So earlier uh, th this year, you had the, uh, th the balancing act of wrapping things up at NXT while also being introduced on the main roster. Yeah. Once you, like post WrestleMania, stand and deliver, what was sort of your mindset of, are there little changes I have to make when I'm coming up here, things that are going to work in NXT that I have to change up here? What, what's that kind of process? Because everyone's going to have different experiences and kind of testing things out to a larger audience. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's kind of wild because, you know, coming from NXT, you know, everybody knew who I was. I was the man. I won everything. Uh, you know, it was a smooth ride, right? I mean, straight to the top. Uh, and then here, starting brand new, where I have to reintroduce myself to a lot of you know these fans that have never seen me and then on top of that going against all their favorite wrestlers where you know they you know they're rooting for them and they don't, could care less who they're entering with you know so i'm just reintroducing myself to uh to a brand new audience i think it's been the biggest challenge so much was uh built up with yourself and trick williams how did that culminate for you guys both at stand and deliver and the follow-up match and do you think that that's something that when did you guys realize that man we have something very special here was that very early days for you two Believe it or not, we, you know, the, the plan was never to do the one-on-one. Do the -on -one. It was never that. It was never even really to break up. Um, I think what had happened was between the two of us, you know, we were both like, hey, you know, I want a shot on my own because at that time, you know, he had been by my side and we were, you know, cheating every match and, you know, and I was now, you know, a baby face or however you want to put it. You know, I was a good guy. And, you know, that dynamic was just changing. So it was kind of like, well, hey, you know, how are we going to both become individuals? And at the same time, I didn't want him to be like my side guy all the time. You know, I, I wanted him to get some reps. I wanted him to get in the ring and, and build his name up as well. So, I mean, it culminated by accident, but it ended up being the best accident that could have happened for NXT. My last question for you is, as you departed NXT, you know, we saw television numbers going up. You guys are doing great attendance on the road. You were there right at the, you come into NXT and boom, it flips to the 2.0 era. People didn't know what this was going to be. Did you guys kind of feel vindicated by the end of what you guys grew this completely curveball of an idea and what it turned into and where, where the brand standed by the time you exited? Yeah, I mean, they stripped all the experience out of out of NXT, you know what I mean? They stripped a lot of the, you know, heavy hitters that had been there for a while. So, I mean, a lot of us younger guys, we understood what it was. Like, we were like, hey, you know, it's it's just us. Like, <laughs> I knew I wasn't, I, I was like, hey, that top spot is wide open. You know what I mean? I'm taking it. And obviously, you know, Braun, and then I had to get through Braun and stuff. So, uh, yeah, but we knew what it was, and, and, and we were super glad we got to do that. Thanks so much for your time. Thank all, you, bro. All the best this weekend. Appreciate you, John.